Hello, welcome to the second session of outdoor sketching. Today we're going to be looking at buildings. Now, before you start panicking, I just want to explain this isn't going to be about um, really technical, um, difficult, careful drawings of buildings and preciseness. If you want that, you can take a photograph of a building. Uh, you can do that uh, very carefully at home, plot things out and so on. This is much more about capturing the feel, capturing the, what interests you in the building and so on. And so it's a much, much looser approach. So I'm going to flick through um, one of my sketchbooks to show some examples. For, so here, um, using a continuous line and concentrating on the, um, the repetition of shapes, but not worrying too much that everything's gone a little bit wonky. Um, this one um, bold um, black pastel and then washes and bits of pen. But again, you know, there's a little bit of perspective in there. And we'll, we'll just look at the basic sort of bits of perspective. It's not something to really worry about. Um, lovely, bright, bold colours. I'm trying to capture the feel of somewhere, the light in this case. Again continuous line looking at texture continuous line looking at details it might be that um, when we go out sketching on the thursday you just want to look at details and not really try to draw the whole of buildings it might just be doorways or arches or windows that really interest you you see that sometimes these sketches are very very loose sometimes much much more about the texture let's turn that one around so you can see it a little bit better so very very much about texture and pattern rather than about lots and lots of uh, of careful measuring let's see what else we've got here all kinds of some of them just very very loose little tiny sketches details you can see that, it, that drawing outdoors doesn't have to be about really precise, um, accurate drawings. It's more about capturing that sort of feel. So I'm going to be working um, from photographs. The photographs I'm going to be working of are of um, Tavistock Town Hall. And... looking closer at some of the details on it um, we're going to be meeting in the churchyard weather permitting um, and you can draw anywhere around there you can wander up the streets or whatever um, but i'm going to be working from photographs because that way it keeps the production costs down so let's get started so i've got my double page spread of my sketchbook with my elastic bands to um, hold it down and I'm going to be working from this um, fairly straightforward view of the town hall and uh, today I'm going to work with a, a, a fine liner that isn't a permanent one so if I had water it would run um, you could equally just be using an ordinary bit pen but I'm going to add a little bit of water to it after my first sketch so I'm going to zoom the camera in so you can see a little bit closer for this first exercise, I'm going to be using what's called continuous line drawing. This is a very, very good way to start drawing anything because um, it's about trying to get your hand and your eye to move together. Um, so I'm going to try as much as possible not to take my pen off the paper. It doesn't matter if I do a little bit. Um, but what I'm trying to do is get my eye to move slowly around um, this building and draw um, at the same time exactly what my eye is seeing and really focusing in on details rather than worrying about getting things in exactly the right sort of place so i'm going to start off with a little bit of tower and really sort of looking to see the detail of it as it comes down as i say this is a slow meditative process
so there's my continuous line sketch um, as you can see things are, are quite wonky um you know all over the place but what i've been able to really notice is all of the detail with the shaping and so on if i sort of put the photograph next to it for a moment you'll also notice that um i haven't worried about the perspective you know i've just sort of uh, let let that go um so um, quite a loose sort of interpretation but it's a way of uh, really starting to capture uh, the idea of all the shapes and really helping you look at them and what I'm going to do now is add just a tiny bit of water to it um, because these pens as I said um, are water soluble so I've got a very just a slightly damp brush and I'm going to look at first of all where the sort of shadows are and just loosen that ink down into those shadows Maybe a little bit more water than that just a bit try not to put too much more water on if you're trying this you know the sort of shadows in the windows some darker bits It just gives it a bit of a sense of a shadow in places. Now, if I wanted to, I could wash a little bit of colour into there as well. Um, and I might just add a little bit of, um, just to, keeping it fairly naturalistic, I might just add a little bit of brown in there too. So a little bit of brown in there and I decided I wanted to add a little bit of blue um, just to create those shadows and a little bit of reflection uh, of the sky and the windows. And you might wonder why blue? Well, that's something I'm going to come on to uh, in the next exercise. Here's a sketch which exploits the uh, important quality of using blue for shadow. I've also used blue for the line. Uh, and as you may be able to tell, this isn't Tavistock. It's just um, an example I've got in one of my sketchbooks. But can you see how warm this picture feels? Because we've got the redness, you know, the strong warmth of the red, but the shadows are blue. And this is something that naturally happens. When you've got um, direct sunlight, uh, you will get, you know, a warm sunlight, you, you know, you'll get a sort of yellowy colour and it's full sun. A very slightly yellower light but in the shadow you get a bluer light and by contrasting warm and cold you sort of heat up your picture so if i just flick back to this one of the town hall um by contrasting the this blue in the shadows with the yellow can you see it just makes the picture that a little bit warmer and i'm gonna i'm going to exploit that and take it to a higher level in my next sketch 
This is the picture I'm going to be working from. Um, and I hope you can see that there's a certain amount of perspective on that, which basically means that as things are further away, um, they appear smaller. Um, you can get yourself into a, a real sort of mess making this over technical. But uh, perspective, in essence, is as simple as that. If we look at um, this line, everything sort of sloping in that direction and further down something that's parallel is sloping in the other direction and they come together and that's all that perspective is is the further and further away something is the smaller it appears so it appears to come together like that um, i'm going to show you a couple of diagrams of this so here we have uh, so what's called one point perspective so you're looking front on a building and uh, the sides appear to get smaller you see it here look in these arches and that's all it is that those lines sort of kind of converge roughly speaking but all i would do is if i was to draw perspectives look at building hold my pen or pencil up and just see what the lines are and quickly sketch those onto my paper so looking again at this picture, we see that the lines in that direction, so it's parallel, sort of converge a bit like that. And I'm going to sketch those on. If I wanted to, I could also see that the ones in this direction also converge. So just quickly sketch that on with a bit of pencil. Let's just... Mm -hmm. In this direction. Mm -hmm. And that's the starting point for my building. And that's all the lines that I really need. I use these guidelines but again I'm just going to work with continuous line because the technique I like and because I don't want it to be really over fussy and over accurate so I'm just going to put on these maturity things. Um, you might wonder how I'm making sure I get the right amount. Well I'm not. I'm not worried about that at all. Um, I'm just sort of putting them on And working my way around it. I need to have to take a pen off the page a couple of times.
Now, those of you more familiar with Bilden or who are very eagle-eyed may notice that I made a mistake and completely missed this tower off. So then I, I put it back in again. Uh, and as you can see, everything is still just a little bit wonky and so on. But that's the sort of style that, uh, that I quite like. And as I said, if you want me to re be really accurate, you can always take a photograph and, and take your time and really very carefully measure it. But this is about capturing the feel. And now that I've got my basic outline, I'm going to start working with colour. And I'm going to use a very simple um, principle. What I'm going to do is on the um, parts of the building that are in the, um, in the sun, I'm going to use yellowy colours. And then in the darker areas, I'm going to use bluer colours. Um, for the roof, however, I think I might make that a little bit redder just to sort of build that sort of contrast in. Now that I've done that, um, hopefully you can see that, that contrast, warm and cold, really, really brightly. Um, and of course, you want to get the colours um, a little bit more um, exact. You can always work from photographs later. And I'm just going to add on a little bit of brick texture now, I think, onto some of these buildings, just to sort of finish them off, using a simple technique to do a very quick sort of bricky texture There's my finished sketch, um, all kinds of wonky bits, um, you know, but um, fun and it gives me ideas for how I might possibly uh, do a longer study from this building. Um, as well as doing whole buildings, um, or instead of in fact, what you might want to focus on is looking just at some of the, the really interesting details on buildings. Um, and that's what I'm going to move on to next. So I'm back with my pen because I do like just sketching the pen. And I'm going to look at some of these in, these details. So I think the first one, let's have a closer look at some of those sort of turrets at the top. Just sort of trying to sketch them out.
So it's only when you, you look really closely, you appreciate the subtle changes. So this um, turret being square and that one uh, triangular, these um, bits underneath which sort of stick out. And looking at these details is a great way to really begin to see all of those uh, interesting sort of aspects of the building. Um, I'm now going to look at something else, which is to look at the one of the arches. Just looking at that arch, you know, you see all the detail of, of how it's been put together, but also you begin to see the limitation of always drawing with a dark line, because actually most of the lines on here, if you look, I see light lines creating its window frame, and that gives me an idea for another study. So this time, I'm going to put some colours down first, and then I'm going to draw with a Tipex pen. My window has been sketched out roughly in pencil and then a um, quick wash applied. And now all those lovely white lines are going to start to work them back with tippets. Now I'm going to have a little bit of shadow with my blue and black pen. So just looking for those areas of shadow. So there's my two pages of sketches, um, just to recap. Using continuous line, not worrying that things are, uh, are going wonky. Um, using blue for shadows. I'm working with a pen, maybe I'm washes. Um, 
maybe drawing a few construction lines if you want to so you can suggest perspective but then again we're keeping it quite loose <clears throat> trying to capture sort of the feel and maybe playing around with texture and so on and again using the contrast between bright um, warm colors and colder colors to suggest light and shadow just gives you that lovely vibrant sort of feel looking at details and really trying to 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 see the subtlety um, in the buildings you're looking at you might decide just to focus on details and you can be as playful as you like um, here we have you know by using tipex so we're getting those sort of white lines uh, which was quite a fun little study to do um, i hope you have fun watching the video do a little bit of practice and when we meet on thursday um, you could decide to, to tackle whole buildings or you might just want to focus in on uh, on a little bit of the details and remember you can always take photograph accuracy this is much more about getting a feel for it looking at the textures looking at the patterns look at the interesting shapes uh, and really enjoying observing those bye, -bye for now